Pranav Kapadia, welcome to CNN UJ team. Thank you very much. Pranav sir, you're a well-known uh, overseas film distributor based in UK. You're also a film producer. Now, Pathan has grossed rupees 1,000 crores globally with a domestic gross collection of rupees 623 crores and rupees 377 it collected from overseas. Would you please like to tell us how overseas box office works and how much money a producer actually makes from overseas? See, in a way, it is no different from the way it works in India. So when you say gross in India and net in India, it yeah. basically the difference between gross and net is the entertainment tax. Yeah. Similarly, in overseas, depending on the country and the jurisdiction, there is an element of uh, VAT. So on the ticket price, there is a VAT. It can range from 4 5% to all the way 20%, like in the UK. Okay. So when the gross number is reported, and it is, let's say, a million dollars or a million pounds, that is inclusive of that VAT. So when we uh, say net is uh, gross minus the VAT, and that's and then of course then there is a percentage sharing between exhibitor and distributor. But how much does generally this ratio is between a foreign distributor and the and and the, and the studio from India is? See, the thumb rule we use is about 35 to 38 percent of gross is what is realized by the distributor. So a million dollars, you can say roughly 350 to 380 thousand dollars is what will come to the distributor as the share. And the remaining will go to uh, the producer. No. So, OK, so let me start from here. There is a ticket price, which is, let's say, 10, 10 dollars yeah. or 10 pounds. Then that 10 pounds has a component of VAT. So it becomes, let's say, eight pounds net. That is what the exhibitor gets. Yeah. Exhibitor will roughly retain 50 to 55% with the exhibitor. So you're left with about four pounds or four and a half pounds, which comes to the distributor. So like that, from a million dollars, what the distributor gets is about uh, 350,000 or $380,000. Then it comes down to the arrangement between the producer and distributor, whatever that may be. How? Oh. Different was the response of movie goers uh, to Pathan when it opened in the overseas markets. Did you see any difference? See, first of all, Shah Rukh Khan is an iconic superstar. Okay, you look at his film career right from Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge, the breakout film in international, which made him a bona fide superstar. And then, of course, there is all the Karan Johar films. So. Kuch kuch hota hai, kabhi kuch hi, kabhi so, he is the undisputed king in terms of box office. Time and again, his films have crossed, uh, you know, it's crossed uh, and broken records. The past five or six years, he started making different sort of cinema, which you can classify as the non-NRI sort of cinema. And it was showing on the box office. Even his uh, not successful films were usually successful they were just not as successful as his previous film. So he's in a league of his own. Uh, but we are used to, oh, if it's a Shah Rukh Khan film, it has to you know, do this sort of number. Pathan was that film which came after a long time, a Shah Rukh Khan film. It is, uh, you know, it's a masala commercial blockbuster in terms of VFX, in terms of the setting, star cast with Deepika and John. So... Everybody in the trade had a very good idea that this is going to do very good business. But nobody could have said that it's going to do this sort of business. I mean, it's not only broken records, it is set new records. I don't think I could imagine a film in the near future that can even come close. That's how big it is. Do you think when a Shah Rukh Khan films come, you, you tend to take that risk and open films in territories which traditionally are not uh, meant for Bollywood films? 100%. So if the core uh, market is, let's say, 30 to 50 countries, okay, yeah, you can push to about 60 countries for uh, a top uh, star cast film. Shah Rukh Khan films have always gone that 20% new territories. With every film, there is a demand from the non-traditional uh, markets. And we have seen that growth. I mean, he's really been the pioneer in pushing the limits as to where all Bollywood can go. So with Pathan, I have no doubt, yet again, the non-traditional markets have also opened on the same day and date. And as far as I have studied, they even those markets, they've gone and broken records. I mean, Russia, for example, right now, it's 
uh, maybe close to half a million dollar business i mean it's unheard of and it's only the power of this uh, superstar that uh, has he is like the torch bearer of bollywood spain france uh, scandinavia uh, italy every market has uh, opened to you know minimum 15 20 25 screens and grossing in the hundreds of thousand dollars so that's how big it is now you will not see every bollywood film releasing in europe so do you think this will also benefit other uh, bollywood films in future 100% see Uh, as far as diaspora is concerned i mean one in seven person is an indian they don't need any introduction to bollywood right wherever they are they know bollywood but if the film is not releasing in their country they obviously will try to find a link somewhere or watch it online which that uh, that uh, business was never coming in the kitty with every film that releases and this is credit goes to the khans and definitely to sharukh khan that um a territory which is not used to getting a film s- starts you know you start providing you go to the cinema once the cinema sees success people start coming obviously then they want to go next week again to a different film and the third week so then slowly i mean germany is a great example uh, you know with ashoka those many years ago uh sharukh khan pushed the limit and he released the film after that you know every sharukh khan film started releasing then the other superstar films also started releasing and then you have a germany as a robust bollywood territory you can say out of 52 weeks at least 10 to 15 films open in germany so from zero it is in 10 15 years it has come to this level so how many screens generally an indian film gets when it released uh, overseas again it depends on the uh, the star cast and the you know the level uh, the, the production and the you know how big the film is but from it ranges between uh, 3 300 350 screens and then you know i mean in the case of sharukh khan it can go up to 1500 2000 screens would you please like to tell our viewers today how international film distribution network work like in india you know the territories are divided like cp bra nizam east punjab to name a few how many territories or parts are there for the overseas market for indian films See, essentially, there are five big zones, as I put them. This is USA, Canada being one of them, UK, Europe being a second one, Gulf is the third one, Southeast Asia, so Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia is the fourth one, and fifth is Australia, New Zealand, Fiji. So these five territories gives us about eighty to eighty-five percent of the entire business. Then you have smaller pockets, which give you the balance. so africa west indies uh, you know eastern bloc eastern european bloc these are areas which come in the balance 15% but almost all films release in the five big zones now let me remind your viewers uh, if if there are about 170 hindi films being released in india there are only about 30 that release in overseas okay. and then you have uh, south indian cinema so around 50 to 60 total indian films release theatrically every year do you see that number increasing now i don't see the number of films increasing because there's already you know 52 weeks you have one big film every week you can't accommodate more than one film there are of course there are times when two or three films release but they eat into each other's uh, gross uh, numbers uh, what i see as a change over the last 10 years is definitely cinema from tamil telugu languages they've become more you know going up in gross numbers so the balance of hindi to regional cinema that has shifted to i would say hindi is 50% and regional is the balance 50 oh, that was my next question you know uh, in india like like it used to be a sunny deol film will work say in north india or in punjab so internationally are there parts in various countries which you know that this uh, this block or this zone will get uh, audiences say when a junior ndr film uh, Uh, releases or say a film starring Daljeet Dosanjh uh, comes in the theater definitely see uh, you have to, for that you have to understand the diaspora and where the migration has happened so if you look at gulf there's a working class indian community so south indian languages perform extremely well it's like a mass market you know you have the action genre cinema that works brilliantly well in gulf whereas in the uk 
you have an older migration. So people have come here in 70s and 80s. So they are still reminiscent of the India that they have left behind. So the family value films, the love stories, the, you know, the song and dance, those sort of cinema has performed exceedingly well in the UK. Then you look at the US. The US has a lot of IT professionals who've come. So again, Telugu cinema is huge. Uh, Tamil yeah. cinema is huge. And they are also very open-minded about, uh, you know, new concepts. So US is very receptive to any new kind of cinema. And then you have Canada and Australia. The maximum migration over the last five years has happened, uh, has moved from India to Australia and Canada. So a lot of Punjabi content has really resonated in these two territories. So you have the Punjabi films breaking the million dollar mark very often, even higher than a Hindi uh, film would cross. It, is it a big number for, for, for an Indian film yes. to cross? Yes, yes, yes. Because Canada is unique. It has very few screens. I mean, you can do a million, two million dollar box office with only 30 to 50 screens. Okay. Oh, that much, so much audience they have. Yeah. How Western audiences react now to Indian film? Have you noticed a change in the way they now respond to Indian film? Say it's film from Bollywood, Tollywood and Tamil films? See, I've been personally based in uh, UK for the last 23 years. When I came, uh, the recognition of Bollywood was... It was there, but it was like, you know, a small section in a DVD shop. Like they would be categorizing it under world cinema. So along with Korean, Italian, French, they would have, okay, you know, there's some Bollywood as well. Now I don't think anybody has not heard Bollywood. Everybody knows what is Bollywood. So there's Hollywood and then there's Bollywood. In fact, the other world cinema has sort of slowed down and our awareness is really out there. Of course, it's Thanks to our, our ambassadors of, uh, you know, like Shah Rukh Khan, uh, who have taken this, uh, who've been the flag bearers and who've taken this forward by doing one amazing box office numbers. You have, uh, you know, the, with all the, uh, uh, for example, Slumdog Millionaire, suddenly you're breaking out into uh, Anil Kapoor out there doing even a Mission Impossible, things like that. You know, slowly, it's like a collective effort as an industry. We made baby steps, but now it's out there. We are a force no one can ignore. When this shift happened in the overseas market for Indian films, do you see Indian films getting more screen in multiplexes now? And which film you think that was sort of the turning point that changed the perception of Western audiences? I would say ever so often there have been these uh, uh, the small moments and small uh, uh, achievements which have led to this where we are today. So I would say DDLJ was one big landmark. Then Hamap Ke Hekon pushed the envelope. A Lagan even pushed it further. Uh, like you said, lunchbox, uh, monsoon wedding. There are things you can't just pinpoint one thing, but there have been these efforts which have each one of them have uh, taken it forward. What about medium films like Masan, Vicky Donut? Do they also get good response when they open overseas? Yes, they have. So, Vicky Donor in particular, I mean, uh, on when the film was being produced, it, one didn't think that it would merit an overseas release. But uh, again, uh, when I this was when I was part of Eros International and Eros, uh, the management and uh, the, the view was always that if we've made it, let's put it out there. Let's see how it works. Yes, it may not connect and therefore we will... Uh, not recover the cost of release, but unless you put it out there, you won't know. And Vicky Donor in particular was a breakout success. The, so these efforts are required for you to have the conviction that you believe in the product, you believe in the story, and it will resonate. See, human beings are the same. If it, English English is another great example. Uh, it has gone to so many countries outside the diaspora because the human connect is universal the language may be different the narrative may be different but they can feel the pain of the leading character of the film pranab sir thank you so much for your time here wishing you lots of blockbusters many thanks for talking to me thank you so much and best of luck thank you